guys. Remember how we lamented the awful ending of The Little Mermaid? We asked for your help and we got it. Four-year-old Willow wrote a much better ending. Thank you, Willow. You're amazing. And now for our version. And now for our version of The Little Mermaid. Far, far out in the ocean, where the water is deeper than the tallest mountain, lived the sea people. They had the top half of a human, like you and me, but down below, instead of legs, they had a fish's tail. These were mer people. The sea king was a merman. He lived in his beautiful shimmering underwater castle. It was made of the most brightly colored corals and shells with curious colorful fish zipping in and out of the cracks and crevices. The sea king lived with his six mermaid daughters who tended to their sea gardens. The youngest mermaid, the little mermaid, was the favorite of all the fish which swam up to the princess, ate out of her hands and allowed themselves to be stroked by her. The little mermaid dreamed of visiting the world above the sea. Her grandmother would tell her stories about grand sailing ships, enormous towns, people with legs and bees that buzz around the sweetest smelling flowers. Can I go, Granny, please? When you are old enough, said the grandmother, you will have permission to rise up out of the sea to sit on the rocks in the moonlight while the great ships are sailing by and then you will see both forests and towns. The little mermaid was bursting with impatience, especially when her sisters grew up and each in their turn went to visit the magical world above. They delighted her with stories of the twinkling lights of the city, the beauty of a sunset, the songs of the birds in the sky, the children laughing in the waves, and much, much more. <laughs> At last, the little mermaid became an adult, and it was her turn to see the upper world for herself. She left the sea castle and floated up like a bubble to the surface. When her head broke through the foam, the sun had just gone down and the clouds looked like they were on fire with red and gold. Nearby was a ship with three tall masts. There was lively music playing on the ship with people cheering, laughing and celebrating. Soon, fireworks came shooting up from the ship. The Little Mermaid was startled, but was soon overcome with the beauty and colors on display. A wave lifted her up and enabled her to see into a window of the ship. Inside, she saw a handsome prince being cheered on by the crew. They must be celebrating his birthday, thought the Little Mermaid, who felt a twinge in her heart as she looked upon his kind face. Suddenly, a fierce wind picked up. The waves grew dangerously high. The boat began to pitch this way and that. She could hear the urgent cries of the crew as they tried to handle the ship. And then, lightning struck the highest mast. It came crashing down in burning splinters onto the deck. Another bolt of lightning split the whole boat down the middle. The boat was doomed. The crew was in a state of panic. Many of them leapt into the water. Others were trapped under the ruins of the ship. The little mermaid swam as close as she dared to come. But she was unable to rescue them all. 
but she was able to rescue just one. Floating past her, she saw the prince helplessly sinking down to the depths below. She held him under his arms and dragged him up for air. He was unconscious, but still breathing. She swam with all her might to the seashore. Exhausted, she managed to drag him onto the beach. People nearby realized something had happened, and they were coming closer. The little mermaid slipped back into the water. She hid herself in a clump of seaweed and looked on from a distance. The prince soon woke up and looked at the concerned crowd around him. A young woman was nursing him back to life. He smiled at her in gratitude. He had no idea who had really saved him. The little mermaid longed to approach him, but knew she couldn't. In despair, she sank down into the depths, back to the sea kingdom below. The poor princess was deeply in love, but she was a mermaid and he was a human. There was nothing she could do. Or was there? The sea witch. She cried. She must be able to help me become a human. So she set off to find her. Far from the glittering realms of the Sea King, she came to the gloomiest part of the ocean she had ever seen. Even the dreaded kraken and the fiercest sharks never set fin or tentacle in that undersea valley of despair. She drifted through a strange seaweed forest in which all the trees and flowers were half plant, half animal, grasping for her menacingly as she swam past. She came to a house built from the bones of land creatures that had died a watery death. It was surrounded by rotting shipwrecks on all sides. I know why you are here, came a voice. It came from behind her. She turned to see a creature with the top part of a human and the bottom a twisted combination of octopus and crab. It was the sea witch. Sea snakes were slithering around her. She stroked them absent-mindedly and carried on. You wish to have the body of a human, stupid girl. More than anything, said the little mermaid. I can make your tail disappear with the legs in its place. Then you can walk with humans and your precious prince. Yes, yes. But... Everything has a price, little girl. If you change into a human, you can never be a mermaid again, ever. If you return to the sea, you will be destroyed. The mermaid shuddered. You will never again see your family and never return to the sea kingdom. And what is more, to achieve such powerful magic. You must pay me the price of your beautiful voice. You will never speak again. The little mermaid longed so badly for the prince and for a human soul that she whispered, so be it. These words were the last sounds she ever uttered. The witch then gave the mermaid an evil smelling flask of potion. Swim up to the seashore, lie upon the beach, and drink this. Now go! She bellowed. When she arrived at the beach, she dragged herself onto the sand 
and looked at her beautiful silver fishtail for the last time. Then she raised the witch's potion to her lips and drank deeply. At once, pain racked her body and she fainted. She awoke to find the prince standing over her. Are you all right? He asked. But the little mermaid couldn't reply. She had lost her voice. She looked down and saw her tail was gone. She had human legs. She smiled at the prince, stood up and began to run, skip and dance with joy. The prince looked on with delight. Although she did not utter a word, he was completely charmed by her. The prince took her back to his palace and dressed her in the finest clothes. He didn't seem to mind that she was unable to speak, and they became best of friends. They rode through forests together. They climbed mountains and played in the streams. Yet although the little mermaid was happier than she had ever dreamed, she could not escape the heavy feeling in her heart. With a sore heart, she longed to see her family again. She would sometimes sit on the shore and gaze upon the sea, sometimes seeing a flash of a mermaid tail, or a glint of what might have been a golden crown in the water, or was it just a reflection of the light. But she was forever forbidden from returning to the sea by the witch's curse. Eventually, a day came when it was said that the prince must marry and that the beautiful daughter of a neighboring king would be his wife. I must travel, he said to the little mermaid. My parents wish me to marry a distant princess. Come with, my dear friend, to be my maid of honor. They sailed for a night and day, and all the time the little mermaid was desperate to jump into the sea and visit her family below. The ship finally arrived at the neighboring kingdom, and they were greeted by cheering townsfolk. The prince's bride came running to meet him. The little mermaid's heart froze. It was the woman who had helped the prince on the beach. He thought that she was the one who had saved him. That evening, there were celebrations, fireworks, music and rejoicing for all except the little mermaid who gazed sadly into the sea. She was happy for the prince, but not for herself. And she had no way to let him know. Tearfully, she lowered herself into the sea preparing to be destroyed by the witch's curse. And then she was gone. Meanwhile, the wedding was underway. The prince was just about to marry his bride-to-be. However, he had a gnawing feeling inside him. Something was wrong. He had been wrestling with his confusing emotions for a long time. And now he was coming face to face with reality. He was marrying the wrong person. His wedding had been arranged by his father and the neighboring king. They didn't give a hoot whether the bride and groom loved each other, but the prince did. He knew who he loved, the little mermaid. The crowd at the wedding was astounded to see the prince run out of the wedding. He ran for the ocean. He knew that's where she'd be. But when he got there, she wasn't there. In his heart, he knew it was too late. Despairing, he waded into the water, waves crashing into him. He knew she was gone, and there was nothing he could do about it. Tears began streaming down his face. What a all he'd been. The tears ran down his cheeks like a waterfall of sorrow. It was as if each tear contained his happiness, his love. 
He wished he could bring her back. And then a single teardrop fell off his cheek into the ocean. As it did so, he was racked with pain. His body began to magically change. His legs felt like they were being twisted this way and that. He looked down in shock to see that they were gone. Instead, he had a fish tail. He had become a merman. He flopped about in the water, unable to control his tail. But then, some gentle hands gripped him from behind and steadied him. He knew these hands. They had saved him before. He turned to see the little mermaid. She too had a fish tail. She had become a mermaid again. They hugged each other with delight. After recovering from the shock of being a merperson, the prince declared his love for the little mermaid. Together they swam down to the magical underwater kingdom where they lived happily ever after. Thank you for listening to this episode of Bye Kids, Kids for Kids Storytime. Story performed by Maya Degenhardt, Mulga Shargal, Lucy Burt, and Max and Ruby Jews. Hey guys, if you like this episode, Please share it with your friends and family. It is one of the best ways to support BKFK Storytime.